Iris Sullivan here on DCB Jazz. And we are getting ready to hand things off over to Barry Winograd down at the Piano Forte Studios as we continue our Jazz Fest Week live broadcast from Piano Forte. This morning with a live uh, interview and performance from Jeffrey Kieser. Riverwalk is on hold this week. We'll be bringing you that back next week at its normal time. Swing shift on at 11 with Bruce Oscar, so no worries there. For now, you are going to hear some fine modern jazz piano from Jeff Kieser. Right here at 90.9 FM, WDCB and WDCB HD1 Glen Ellen. Of course, on the web, we're at WDCB.org. Here's Barry Winograd. And thanks, Paul. Good morning, and welcome to the Piano Forte Studios, 1335 South Michigan Avenue in Chicago, for another of our Jazz Fest Week live broadcasts. Hi, I'm Barry Winograd, and pianist Jeffrey Kieser is here with us today. And in just a moment, we're going to talk with him about his music, and he's going to play a few tunes for us as well. This broadcast is made possible with support from Steve Maxwell Vintage and Custom Drums, and also support from the Hemmings Theater in Elgin. The Piano Forte Foundation's mission is to preserve and promote piano culture. Upcoming events include a concert and live broadcast here tomorrow at 10 a.m. with Lawrence Hobgood and a pair of solo performances from Vijay Iyer on Friday, September 5th. More info at pianofortefoundation.org or at 312-291-0291. Let's start our morning off with some wonderful music from Mr. Jeffrey Kieser.
All right. Well, Jeffrey, it's great to have you here, and uh, I'm just going to walk over here. I know I'm supposed to stand over there, but uh, if you can see us on the radio, you can see I'm moving, and uh, Thomas Zoll's the man in charge, said it's okay. Uh, is that a, an original of yours? No, that is a piece uh, by Peter Gabriel called Come Talk to Me um, that I recorded on my new record that's called Heart of the Piano, H-E-R-T. Uh -huh. uh, you know, I live in California, so it's eight o'clock in the morning for me right now, <laughs> so I'm trying to wake up and play some jazz uh, or something with some energy to it. But uh, Well, you're a road warrior. You've uh, been on the road with Blakey, with Ray Brown, Christian yeah. Brad, all the cats. You know uh, yep. the, the difference of time changes. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. And the time at the piano is pretty good, too. Oh, thanks. Oh, yeah. So your new recording, it's called Heart of the Piano, and tonight you're going to be performing at 5 p.m. here at Piano Forte. Are you going to be uh, referencing all those songs on the new recording? Uh, quite a few of them. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's it's sort of the new stuff that I like to play and uh, some things that I recorded uh, about 14 years ago on another album called Zero One. Um, okay. And just whatever else comes to mind. All right. I like the solo. When Sometimes when people think of solo piano, they get a little bit apprehensive because they think, oh, maybe, maybe it's going to be something really dark and brooding and, and very intensely <laughs> personal and something that's only going to appeal to how really hardcore piano fans, you uh, know, and, and what I, I like to try to, you know, I like to try to make good art, but I also look at it as good entertainment, too. So I try to put on a, a program that's, you know, that's fun to listen to and has a lot of energy and is, and is very interactive with the audience. So it's, it's going to be something that even if you're not necessarily a fan of solo piano, it's something I think you might enjoy. So. Well, and I like the fact you've reached into the Peter Gabriel songbook. Yeah. You're reaching into a new generation, not just the great writers of the 20s, 30s, and 40s, but right. there's Well, it's my generation. I mean, that's a song from 1991 mm -hmm. from an album called Us. Um, in fact, I, I posted on YouTube a video of, of that song, of me playing that song, and, and Peter very gratefully, not that we're on first name basis, but Mr. Gabriel <laughs> very gratefully uh, reposted it and, mm -hmm. and, and signed it PG. And he said, if you like uh, improvised jazz piano, check this out. And, and the, not that I want to make a big deal out of it, but the hits, I think I had maybe 17, okay. not 1,000, just 17, 17. hits. <laughs> and that, that includes the 12 times that I was hitting reload, and then I got my mom involved. And the five times Peter Gabriel was figuring that's out how right. to do it. Yeah. And, and then I think it jumped overnight to like 15,000. So that's the, wow. the you know, power of that kind of endorsement. But I was really, really honored that he, that he liked it. Well, that's wonderful. I'd like to remind folks that if you uh, enjoy Jeffrey Keyser, you can come out here tonight to 1335 South Michigan Avenue. It's a 5 p.m. show, and for tickets, you can get them at pianofortefoundation.org or give them a call, 312-291-0291. You're listening to DCB uh, Jazz. I'm Barry Winograd, Jeffrey Keyser, our guest, a man who has explored many different types of music, not just Peter Gabriel, but of course the Great American Songbook, folk music from around the world, and uh, is your new recording um, music of your own, or uh, uh, mainly music of your own, or have you explored more than just Peter Gabriel? Um, I play songs by uh, the, the Canadian rock band Rush, uh, okay. Alanis Morissette, the, the great Canadian songbook is actually what I'm doing, <laughs> apparently. So you're doing Oscar Peterson stuff. Yeah, there you go. Um, <laughs> Let's see, some, some free improvisations, mm -hmm. a couple of songs, one song by James Williams, uh, the pianist James Williams, sure. one by Donald Brown. Mm -hmm. um, Great just piano a good players. A mixture of things, a, a Scottish folk song. Um, so a sort of, of a, the guys on Blakey's band, you're just reaching in into their uh, repertoire and uh, pulling some tunes. Yeah, well, that was, that was the music that I, yeah. I grew up with and yeah. we, listening to. And, and well, I hear that from Johnny O'Neill, too. Yeah, yeah. 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 All right, well, why don't we get you to uh, play another song from uh, Heart of the Piano, uh, okay. Jeffrey Keyser. So this is, this is a song, this is my favorite song by the band Rush. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm really a fan, I truly am. I've been to every tour since 1985, and uh, these guys are great musicians, and they write really interesting songs. So this is a song called Limelight. Okay. Jeffrey Keyser.
Thank you. Well, that was wonderful. Uh, you're listening to uh, WDCB 90.9 FM, WDCB.org, and don't forget in Chicago on cable, you can get us on channel 42 these days. The new recording called Heart of the Piano, that's what's going to be featured tonight at 5 p.m. I'm going to move over here so I don't fall over. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> you've had a wonderful uh, opportunity throughout your career to work with all sorts of great artists, and I was looking and I noticed all the great bass players. I mean, all that's missing is maybe uh, Jimmy Blanton and Oscar Pettiford. But Ray Brown and yeah. Christian McBride, and oh, did you ever work with Nels Henning uh, at all? Uh, no, I, yeah, I didn't. But I, uh, I just wanted to ask: as as a solo pianist, you're taking care of the lower end, the bass side. But I, when you're working, I with try to. Well, I figure there's 88 <laughs> keys, and I've got, you know, at least uh, 10 fingers, so I try yeah. to get them all working. <laughs> but when you're working with a bass player, with the musicality, the beauty, the, the of a Ray Brown or a Christian McBride, does that free you up somewhat to use your uh, left hand, the lower end of the piano, a little bit differently? Yeah, well, I've always kind of been a frustrated bass player, really. <laughs> and, and I remember even when I was a kid listening to, uh, like, Beethoven symphonies and Bach mm -hmm. organ pieces and things like that, and, and my ears always gravitated to the bass line because I, I can remember, like, you know, symphonies by the bass lines, you know? Wow, that's, <laughs> that's just sort of where my ears went, and then I think yeah. I... Tried to learn a little bit of bass at one point, and and uh, I just hear down there, and so, uh, my, you know, when I'm playing solo piano, I, I like to keep a groove happening. I I think because solo piano can can very quickly, uh, I don't want to say degenerate. That's a little too too harsh of a term, but it it can become very rubato and very kind of. Oh, we got really loud there for a second. Yeah. Um, <laughs> cocktail piano-ish mm -hmm. um, and and so one of the things that I like to do is is make it sound like there's still a bass and drums playing you know like there's a band sure. there so I like to have that kind of groove and that kind of energy as much as possible um, playing with a bass player definitely frees you up I mean I try to stay out of their way mostly mm -hmm. uh, and then I can kind of use my left hand for other other things, you know. Well, I would think the conversation between your left and right hand is one thing, whereas the conversation between, conversation between you and a bassist is a whole different uh, world. Yeah, well, the fun thing, I, I love collaborating and, and interacting and playing with musicians on lots of different instruments, whether sure. it's bass or uh, vocalists or even uh, something as you know, unusual as like Hawaiian slack key guitar or traditional Okinawan uh, Sanshin player, you know, things, I've done a lot of, maybe the last 50, 10 to 15 years of my career has been focused a lot on collaborations with artists from all over the world, mm -hmm. and uh, I love just finding those spaces and those ways, you know, places where you can kind of have a conversation with someone and, and, and um, you know, interact and create something that's new and fresh, and Hopefully well, not and uh, the ideas <laughs> coming from another human rather than your own ideas. Yeah, so yeah. It, it adds to the, uh, the mixture of, of the music. Absolutely. I mean, this is probably a much more interesting conversation that we're having together than if I just sat up here and and talked all by myself. You know. Well, yeah. <laughs> so. I mean, we all talk to ourselves all the time, and that's a scary <laughs> thought, but it's a good thought. I'd like to remind you, this is Jeffrey Kieser we're speaking with. I'm Barry Winograd. If you're tuning into WDCB for Riverwalk, it'll be back next week. Have no fear. I'd like to remind you that Jeffrey Kieser will be here at 1335 South Michigan Avenue, the Piano Forte Studios, tonight at 5 p.m. Tickets are available, pianofortefoundation.org, online, or give them a call, 312-291-0291. Nine one, And tonight we're going to be hearing uh, music from his new recording, Heart of the Piano. And uh, what are we going to hear from, uh, hear from there next? I'm going to play a piece that is a Scottish folk song. The, the lyrics are written by the great Scottish poet Robert Burns. Oh, yeah. Who also is known for, if you've ever been to a, a Scottish wedding, he's, he wrote Ode to a Haggis, <laughs> <laughs> which they do at all Scottish weddings. But I don't think it's ever quite, has been set to music quite as eloquently as this song. It's called My Love is Like a Red, Red Rose. Jeffrey Keezer.
That was wonderful. Thanks. And I'd like to remind again, remind everyone again, you're listening to Jeffrey Kieser here at Piano Forte Foundation, or Piano Forte Studios, sorry, Thomas. And uh, that tomorrow at 10 a.m., we will have uh, Lawrence Hobgood here and uh, being broadcast as well. Now, Jeffrey, you've had a lot of uh, opportunities to work with a lot of uh, great musicians, and I know this is a story you've told a lot, but I know our audience would like to hear it one more time. You're out of Eau Claire, Eau Claire? Eau Claire, yes. Eau Claire Wisconsin, which right isn't too road. far from yep. here. And a lot of great Wisconsin cats were coming out at that time. I think Brian Lynch and John Weber and Jackie Allen, all these wonderful musicians out of Wisconsin that have come through Chicago. But you, at the age of 18, how did you hook up with uh, one of the masters of jazz, Art Blakey? I, uh, I was introduced to Art Blakey by the pianist James Williams, okay. who I became friends with when I was about 15 mm -hmm. or 16. And um, we kept in touch, and I would send him recordings of my music. I would get together with my friends and my dad mm -hmm. in Eau Claire and make tapes of my you know, tunes and stuff, and I would send them to James. And then James, um, he took my recordings to uh, record producer Francois Alacane in New York, who has a record company called Sunnyside, right. uh, a label. And uh, convinced him to let Francois uh, to let me make a record, mm -hmm. or I actually made two records for for Sunnyside. Um, but James was uh, Art Blakey's pianist and musical director in, during the '70s for for quite a while, and he introduced me to Art at a club called McKell's in the Upper mm -hmm. West Side, in New York. Okay. And uh, I, I had already been playing that music for several years with my friends back home. I just love that music. I had all of Art Blakey's records, and of I had course. a band. We tried to yeah. play those arrangements and everything. Mm -hmm. And so by the time I actually got the chance to sit in with the real band, um, it was one of those sort of law of attraction kinds of things. I just really had been drawing that to me for so many years that it just felt natural, even though I was completely freaked out. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, but I knew the music. Who's that you know? guy at the drums? Yeah, yeah. I'm like, what, <laughs> really? But it was, it was fun. It was a yeah. lot of fun. Well, that's wonderful. Yeah. And I know over the years you've uh, worked with a lot of different folks, and now you said you're residing in uh, Southern California, Los yeah. Angeles. Have you found that your music has changed because of your environment, having lived in New York City and now living in L.A.? It's, a, it's certainly a different rhythm of life in both places. I always wondered if it would. I thought, gosh, mm -hmm. what's, if I move to the West Coast, am I going to become like a West Coast-style player or something? But I think that that categorization may have had more... You know, it might have meant more like in the 1950s or 60s when Certainly. you could really differentiate between like the West Coast style of jazz and the East Coast. But I've always been a New York style player, and uh, that's where I really cut my teeth. And I think that I still try to bring that kind of energy and, and more or less aggressiveness to my music, <laughs> you know. But I do like yeah. to balance it out with a pretty ballad here and there, well, too. I, yeah, <laughs> no, well, of course, there's wonderful ballads from New York. Yeah. Um, listen to Art Tatum. But, uh, <laughs> no, I've known a number of musicians, like yourself, who have moved from New York to L.A., and they don't lose their edge. It's still, Cedar Walton was a great example of that. Yeah, uh, for me, living in New York as a city is, is a wonderful place, but it's got a little too much edge <laughs> for okay. me. Okay, you know? I'm trying to say it nicely. Yeah. <laughs> like, when I, get, when I get off the road, I, I, you know, I live actually in San Diego, and I, I like oh, to okay. relax, you know. I can mm -hmm. just be at home, and it's kind of it's an easy place to live, and the weather's nice. And, and a lot of good musicians. Yeah. Yeah, there's yeah. a bass player, I think, Rob Thorson. Rob's a friend of mine, yeah. Mother, uh, excuse me, a wonderful player. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you can call him that if you want. <laughs> okay, why don't we go back to some music now. Uh, I'd like to remind you there's a new recording, Heart of the Piano, and Jeffrey Keezer is uh, its solo, and he will be doing a solo session tonight at 5 p.m. Tickets are available, and you can get them at pianofortefoundation.org or 312-291-0291. And Jeffrey, what's up next? Thank you. Well, this is a piece uh, by another uh, Scottish artist actually, actually named Katie Tunstall. And I heard this piece when I was sitting in a coffee shop and it came over the stereo and I didn't know what it was. It had a nice hook to it. And I, you know, when I hear like a, a nice melody that I like or an interesting kind of you know, chord progression or even lyrics that I connect to, th those are sort of the criteria for me um, to want to play a piece. And uh, so I took out my Shazam app on my phone, you know, and I said, what is this? And I put it, if you don't know what that is, it's an app that just listens to the music in the room and, and right. analyzes it and sends it to some massive database on another planet, and then it comes back and tells you <laughs> what the song is, and you can right then and there buy it. So I 
or or it or it maybe perhaps sucks the music directly out of the air and puts it into your phone. I'm not sure how it works. Um, <laughs> I'm still I don't even know how my toaster oven works, much less Shazam. But it it told me it was a song called uh, Suddenly I See. So I uh, made a little arrangement of it, and I think it's quite different from the original, but hopefully good. <laughs> I'm sure it is. Jeffrey Keys. <laughs>
That was wonderful. Yes. Uh, you're Yay. listening to WDCB. It's uh, 90.9 FM, WDCB.org, or on cable channel 42 in the city of Chicago. I'm Barry Winograd. That's Jeffrey Keezer at the piano. I'd like to remind you that tomorrow we will have Lawrence Hobgood here at 10 a.m. And for those of you tuning in for Riverwalk, which is usually here on Saturday mornings, of course, it will be back next week. But due to uh, Jazz Fest, we're having a wonderful time broadcasting from Piano Forte Studios and uh, doing many other special events. And if you're coming down to the Jazz Festival, I hope you will stop by in Millennium Park and say hi at our WDCB booth today or tomorrow. Uh, Jeffrey, you've... Uh, Obviously worked with many wonderful instrumentalists, but you're also working with a very special vocalist lately by the name of Denise Donatelli. Oh, yeah. And uh, I understand your uh, arrangement of Don't Explain was uh, recognized uh, for its uh, wonderfulness. Oh, thanks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got uh, nominated for a Grammy Award for yeah. Best Arrangement or something. And how did you, uh, well, first of all, how did you uh, guys hook up? You just meet in L.A. somewhere? Or? I actually just got an email from her about... Uh -huh seven years ago wow. um just completely out of the blue and she mm -hmm. said hi my name is denise anatelli i'm a singer live in la and i'm interested in having you produce my record and i said okay <laughs> 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 and um and then we got together and rehearsed uh for about an hour and i got a little room piano room and and she could you know she could sing pretty much everything and and she said yeah whatever just write whatever you want i can sing anything Wow. Um, and I went, oh, really? Okay. <laughs> and so I, <laughs> I, uh, I wrote some arrangements, and, um, and she did a great job. And we've done uh, four. We're working on our fourth record now. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's in process. And, and each, each time I've, I've, I've kind of gotten to know her better as a, as a musician, as a singer. So I've, I've, I think you know, I've been able to sort of go from a place of writing arrangements not really knowing sometimes sometimes when people hire you don't really know their music and you just kind of mm -hmm. write your stuff and then kind of have them fit in over the top of it and I think over the years I've learned to sort of write more around her style and her voice and her so abilities. So you know that Denise is going to uh, sing it so you write the uh, exactly. sounds around her that exactly. fit her yeah. whereas if uh, you've got Wayne Shorter playing the same song you might do the arrangement a little bit differently. If I had Wayne Shorter playing the song I would let Wayne <laughs> do all of it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know you had an opportunity to work with Wayne a little I bit. I did, yeah. yeah. And I bet that was uh, quite a wonderful experience, a learning experience, I would think. Um, it was it was mind-blowing for me. Mm -hmm. Wayne is my absolute number one hero as a musician and probably as a human being as well. Wow. And um, I grew up listening to his music, and, and really, uh, when the album... Atlantis came out his album post sure. his first post weather report album in 1985 or 86 that album absolutely blew my mind wide open and uh, it, it's one is probably my desert island record uh -huh. you know so to get the chance to to sub for Danilo Perez for three gigs with Wayne's quartet um, back in 2009 was an absolute dream come true for me in a career high mm -hmm. you know so what was so special if I'm a listener and I'm hearing you say Atlantis Wayne Shorter I gotta go check that out what is a listener really excited you about that uh, recording? I think for me, uh, being a composer or an aspiring composer, mm -hmm. I, I think the writing on that record is at such a high level. I think it's at, on a par with any 20th century music that's, you know, that's out there Certainly. Um, in any, you know, classical or jazz or anything. And uh, I, I just love, I love Wayne's melodies. I love the way that he hooks harmony up in, in unusual ways yeah. and, and his own his sound on his instrument is so unique and special, yeah. you know. Well, I always found that his songs reflected his sound and his sound reflected his songs and how yeah. wonderfully they fit in together. Yeah, yeah, I think his music is integrated really, really well and, um, you know, the improvisation and, and composition and, and the way that it mm -hmm. all works together is just, just brilliant, just genius. And you know, have so. you ever sat down did you have a chance to sit down and say hey man you know i'm also writing and uh you know do you have any suggestions or anything like that or no i mean just I, use your ears I, you know i had a couple <laughs> conversations with him on the, uh -huh. on the tour bus sure. and it was it was about science fiction and <laughs> and comic books and other other yeah, things yeah, you know <laughs> yeah. yeah well no and we know that wayne is very much into uh other cultures 
music and sounds and bringing them yeah. into jazz as well through Weather Report and his yeah. own uh, Anna Maria and uh, you know wonderful songs. Uh, I just I just took out uh, got out the record uh, Native Dancer just yeah. last week and I and I love that like, song. Wow, I haven't listened to it in years and what yeah. an amazing record and that and is. And that was sort of the beginning of uh, yeah. the modern Brazilian jazz sounds at that time. That and yeah. Weather Report and Ayrto and everything Milton Nascimento. Yeah. All right, well, uh, we've been listening to music uh, from Heart of the Piano, a new recording that uh, Jeffrey Keezer has put out. Again, he'll be here at Piano Forte Studios, 1335 South Michigan Avenue tonight, 5 p.m. Tickets, pianofortefoundation.org, or you can call 312-291-0291. You're listening to WDCB. I'm Barry Winograd. Jeffrey Keezer is here. And Jeffrey, we've heard you do a lot of other people's music. Can we hear some of your own? Um, <laughs> the funny thing is I don't really play a lot of original music uh, mm -hmm. when I'm playing solo piano just because when I write my own original music, I usually write parts for everybody to play. So I've got a bass part and maybe a horn well, you part. You do the Ellington part. thing, man. You listen to Ellington yeah. and you hear all 16 parts. But I would like to play something <laughs> that I have a real deep personal connection to, okay. which is a piece by um, my friend Christian McBride, who uh, whose band I worked in for nine years from... Mm -hmm the year 2000, 2009. Yeah, he's a very special person. And yeah. um, this is a piece of his, and it's something we played every night, and it's called Lullaby for a Ladybug. Okay, Jeffrey Keezer.
Thank you. Jeffrey Kieser. Well, I'm Jeffrey, starting to wake up a little now. <laughs> yeah, that's good. You sound Jeez. like you're waking up a little bit. You ready for some quick stride for us? Oh, God. <laughs> I don't think so. Is no. there a uh, certain pianist or piano style that you would say you're uh, coming out of a certain part of the heritage of jazz? I mean, I, I'm not... Very much. Any. Yeah, very much so. Um, I can name quite a few that were really, really big influences. Mm -hmm. Hank Jones, probably number one. Certainly. Um, even when I played that Rush piece, Limelight, I... The, the harmony, the harmonic concept was something that I got directly from Hank, um, yeah. the way that he used to play, especially uh, like an album like Tiptoe Tap Dance oh, that he made yeah. or any of his solo piano things. He had this really beautiful, rich harmonic concept. Um, when I used to go see Hank play in New York in the 90s at places like Fat Tuesdays, um, he... He always sounded to me, if I wasn't watching, like he had two left hands and a right <laughs> hand. Like he had a whole extra left hand, because uh -huh. he would play these big, you know, these big kind of sounds. Um, so that was a big influence. Also, uh, Buddy Montgomery. Oh. I used to go see him play quite a bit in New York. Uh -huh. uh, he, he would play solo piano at the Parker Meridian. And you could sit around the piano. Um, there was like a bar around the piano, and you could sit there and have a ginger ale or something and maybe yeah. Johnny Mandel or somebody would be sitting next to you you know all the <laughs> guys would be there hanging out um, and of course uh, Ahmad Jamal I, I have to name him is a, a very big influence um, conceptually for me especially when I'm playing trio I think mm -hmm. you know people I play trio occasionally with uh, when I'm, I'm on tour now with Chris Bode and his band and we have a, a drummer named Billy Kilson in okay. the band who, who sure. played with Ahmad Jamal for years and and sometimes I'll I'll play something, he'll look at me and smile because he's like, yeah, that sounded like Ahmad, you know? <laughs> <laughs> um, and of course, Chick Corea, Herbie Hancock, uh, McCoy Tyner. Did you ever have like a chance to sit around the bar and listen to Ellis Larkins while you were in New York? I, no, I didn't, I, mm. I, unfortunately. He was one of those cats, and we should tell people that all the musicians knew about. But he just stayed in New York. He played a, right. you know, his own solo gig for 30 years, and that was that. Wow, yeah. yeah. And uh, he was part of the Maybach Recital Hall, and I believe you were too. You no, I never did, oh, one, I of never those, did but, one of those, but uh, Alice, I have to check them out. Yeah, 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 definitely. All right, well, this is Jeffrey Keyser we're speaking with. I'm Barry Winograd. It's WDCB. Bruce Oscar is on the horizon in a few moments with Swing Shift. And uh, tonight at 5 p.m., I'd like to remind you, you can come to Piano Forte at 1335 South Michigan Avenue in Chicago. And uh, the Piano Forte Foundation website is pianofortefoundation.org. You can get your tickets there or at 312 Two nine one zero two nine one, and again we'll be back tomorrow at ten a.m. with uh, Lawrence Hobgood, and I think we have time for uh, one more, Jeffrey. So uh, I'd like to remind everyone: first of all, you have a new recording. Check it out on that uh, Shazam thing or whatever. I bet it's on there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know anything about it. Newfangled, I mean, yeah. Doohickey. Well, I think we both grew up uh, before the answering machine. We used to drive to Chicago from Eau Claire, Wisconsin, just to go to a record store. Which one? I don't remember. We'd, we'd go oh, to the, the one. jazz record. That, probably that one, yeah. Yeah, yeah we would drive down here just, just to shop, you know? Oh, yeah. yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. And you didn't hang and listen to the cats? Oh, of course. But, I mean, oh, that was yeah. part of it, you know? Oh, we'd always yeah. make it because those was before, you know, before iTunes or Amazon or any of that all stuff. Right. Well, I was, you know, when you were bringing up all these songs from around the world, I, w I was going to say that, you know, in the old days, it'd be like, man, you got to check this out. And someone send you a cassette, and the cassette would be... Rrr, 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 right. and you'd be like a fifth or sixth generation. Yeah copy too that's yeah, right it'd be a great tune but it'd be like well i guess yeah. i'll go to the library and see if they've got it if i'm lucky yeah <laughs> yeah so his new recording heart of the piano it's available and tonight he will be performing uh, songs from that here at piano forte foundation and uh, what are we going to uh, close with i'm actually going to play out uh just with the blues this is something that we used to play with ray brown uh Two or three times, um, Ray and Milt Jackson were, were good friends, and, and a couple yeah. times Milt uh, guested, uh, played as a guest with our, with our mm -hmm. trio, and, and that was always amazing. Yeah. Uh, so this is a piece called Bags Groove. All right, and before we get to Bags Groove, i got to ask you once, did you ever golf with Ray Brown? I never did. I wish I had, <laughs> because I'm sure I could have learned a lot. But, but, you know, he liked to golf at like 6 in the morning, so that just right. the hours just weren't good for well, me. I know, <laughs> but I know a lot of guys around here who are, uh, their excuse, pockets though. are a lot shorter because of Ray Brown. I believe it. I believe it. <laughs> okay. All right. Bags Groove. <laughs>
Thanks. Bags Groove, Jeffrey Kieser. Thank you, Jeffrey. You've been listening to Jeffrey Kieser in a live broadcast from the Piano Forte Studios, 1335 South Michigan Avenue in Chicago. He'll be performing this evening at 5 p.m. right here at Piano Forte. Our broadcast this morning is part of WDCB's Jazz Fest Week Live Broadcast Series, made possible by Steve Maxwell Vintage and Custom Drums. Our next live broadcast is tomorrow at 10 a.m., a solo performance from Lawrence Hobgood here at Piano Forte. You can find out more information about tomorrow's event and RSVP if you'd like to attend or purchase tickets for tonight's Jeffrey Keezer solo concert at pianofortefoundation.org or call 312-291-0291. Piano Forte's upcoming events include a pair of solo performances from Vijay Iyer on Friday, September 5th. Thanks to Thomas Zoles, Victor Lejeune, and intern Linus Kruger here at Piano Forte, as well as Clarice Kavoris, Paula Bella, and Bruce Oscar back at the WDCB Studios for production support. And thanks again, of course, to Jeffrey Kieser for a wonderful interview and performance this morning. Don't forget, he'll be here at Piano Forte for a solo performance tonight at 5 p.m. Enjoy the Chicago Jazz Festival today. Come out, say hello at the WDCB booth. I'm Barry Winograd. Riverwalk, it'll return at its regular time next Saturday morning. And right now, we're going to send it back to the WDCB studios where Bruce Oscar is getting ready to bring you the swing shift. <laughs>